thinking a lot, start um, thinking about what's going to happen. And if you lose this game, you're not doing your team any justice. So you have to keep with the game plan and, and keep focus. Over here on the right-hand side. This is uh, for Coach Mata, John Whistler from San Antonio. Uh, Coach, um, talk about Ron Lewis. Is he? Is this the best basketball he's played in his career? Do you think? And is it his leadership as much as his scoring that you value right now? Yeah, I think Ron is is playing tremendous basketball for us, and and you know one of the things we always talk about in our program: the more you give, the more that'll come back to you. And um, you know, probably about a month ago. I started to notice Ron really taking personal uh, a leadership responsibility, and you know uh, the the little things that that he's done in, in timeouts or in the locker room or uh, in practice has been tremendous. And, and I think that uh, you know he he's really reaping the rewards of, of giving. And, and receiving and and uh, you know I, I couldn't be happier for Ron. I, I've you know from the day Ron came to the Ohio State University, uh, I've I've watched his growth as as a player and as a person and and uh, am, am extremely proud to be a part of of you know his uh, maturity along the way. All right, right here on the left hand side, Mike uh, Tim Griffin from the Express News in San Antonio. I wonder if you could just talk about what makes this team so successful in pressure situations. Uh, you guys are a young group, a young point guard. Why have you been able to thrive in a, a situation that would be daunting for a lot of other teams? Um, I think uh, earlier on in the year, um, you know, going down to North Carolina and Florida, you know, it really helped us out um, in the long run, uh, playing against teams like that and, and being in close game situations. And, you know, as, a, as the year went on, you know, we grew as a team, and um, we we're able to, to stick together and not, you know, drift apart in those times that we really need to be together. And, and that's definitely helped us out in the last two games uh, with Xavier and Tennessee. Okay, down here on the front. Marilyn Garcia, USA Today. This is for Greg. Greg, what are teams doing or what are you doing or not doing that, that's leading to foul trouble in the last couple games? Um, just being more physical with me and uh, me being physical back, just um, putting the refs in a position to call those fouls. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But uh, the thing with, with me is just I can't put myself in those positions and be able to hold my ground and just not use my hands as much. Do we have another one on the front? Coach, uh, Rob Patron, WPTY in Memphis. What's the most amazing thing that you've seen Greg do all year? There's been a lot of them. And, and I would say the, the, probably the number one thing would be how he taught himself to, to shoot free throws left-handed and, and, and shoot them at the rate that he did. Uh, I think the other thing would be along those lines of, of sitting out for seven straight months and being thrust in to the, the pressure situation that he was thrust into of, of everybody expecting him to be 100% uh, from the, the day he got back uh, and, and how he handled that and how he continued to work. And, and he, you know, rode the peaks and the valleys and, and uh, you know, just was, was extremely diligent every day after practice. I mean, he, spend, he was spending about 40 minutes uh, working with Allen and, and, and just developing his game. And All right, over here on the left-hand side. Pat, John Henderson, Denver Post. Uh, when you were at Xavier, what was the scouting report on, on Ron? And I know you talked about his leadership, but his skill level, how much has that improved since the first time he showed up at your doorstep? Um, we never played against Ron when I was at Xavier. No, I know, but when you, I, what's the scouting report? I'm embarrassed to say we didn't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but a couple of coaches lost their jobs over it. I, I will tell you that. <laughs> uh, you know, Honestly, I, we, I, I, I am embarrassed to say we, we didn't know who he was. And, and uh, you know, he played on such a great high school team. And, and uh, uh, you know, but in, in watching him develop, I, I think that you, you've, you've got, number one, a very passionate kid who wants to be a great player. And, uh, you know, he wasn't a, a, 
a great shooter when he came to Ohio State. We knew he could drive the ball and get fouled. Um, but I think he's really added a lot to his game. And, and you know, his, his uh, assist to turnover ratio has gotten a lot better. And, uh, you know, I, I've said this before. I think that one of the greatest things that, that ever happened to he and Jamar uh, was a teammate named Jaquel Foster in practice every day. Um, you know, those guys were – Jaquel was like a mentor to those two their first year there, and Ron was even a red shirt, but uh, they weren't in the starting lineup, and every day they would battle and, and beat the heck out of the starting team, and, and I think that really set the stage for, for those two. Okay, over here on the right-hand side. Uh, Thad, Rick Morrissey from the Chicago Tribune. Um, I think there had been some skepticism that, that Mike Conley could kind of hold up physically um, in, the, in the Big Ten, um, and I wondered what you, what you saw that convinced you that he could. Well, I think the, the first thing would be uh, Michael is one of the toughest kids I, I've, I've ever met, but you, you never see that side of him. And, and, and I think he's ultra competitive. Uh, you know, he, he's got tremendous athleticism in, coupled with an intelligence. And um, the, I think one of the biggest thing, things that has helped this team that, you know, for instance, we didn't have last year was the nine guys that we play, and we've been able to give them uh, longer breaks. I've probably been a little bit smarter with, with practices and, and uh, uh, you know, trying to, to limit his minutes in practice. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the one thing, he, he's accustomed to winning, and, uh, you know, he's going to do whatever he has to do to, to win basketball games. Okay, right down here on the right. Bob Baptist, Columbus Dispatch. Mike, uh, you talked after the game last night about um, playing the whole game the way you guys did the second half and I wondered if that was anything that you talked about as a team after the game, why it didn't happen from the outset last night and what you need to do to make sure it does happen tomorrow. Um, I think we weren't ready mentally um, the first 20 minutes yesterday and uh, Tennessee came out uh, on fire and you know punches in the stomach and, and we didn't fight back and uh, we got to be ready for those kind of situations and, and you got to be ready for big games like that and, and we can't afford to to you know play that way uh, against a, a team like Memphis or anybody else from here on. Go ahead. Any ideas why it did happen? Um, you know I'm not sure I felt that we were you know ready but um, you know maybe the way they came out you know on fire kind of caught us off guard a little bit but um, you know I'm not really sure you know hopefully we can you know change that next game.